And so for the beginning of this episode, we are going to get a little spoopy because this is our 25th episode and this is how we are celebrating. (laughs) So just sit back, turn off the lights, maybe cuddle a pet or stuffed animal if you need to for comfort. Have a blanket. Yes. Stay safe under the covers. Yes, and just relax and hear the spoopy stories. I told her there was no monster in her closet as I picked her up and told her she could sleep with us tonight. I figured that was the safest way of getting her out of the house without him realizing I saw him. Oh, oh, that gave me chills. I began tucking him into bed, and he tells me, Daddy, please check for monsters under my bed. I look underneath for his amusement and see him, another him, under the bed, staring back at me, quivering and whispering, Daddy, there's someone on my bed. They say a shiver down your spine means that someone's walking over your future burial site. As my husband walks around outside gardening, the shivers won't stop. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Whew. Uh, I can't move, breathe, speak, or hear, and it's so dark all the time. If I knew it would be this lonely, I would have been cremated instead. The note said, I hate you, Mom. I've run away from home forever. It took me five tries, but I finally got the handwriting to look just like hers. Don't be scared of the monsters. Just look for them. Look to your left, to your right, under your bed, behind your dresser, in your closet, but never look up. She hates being seen. We found your daughter, the officer said, as he drew an X on the map. And then he drew another. And another. (gasps) And another. And another. Oh, Oh, God. I woke up to hear knocking on glass. At first, I thought it was a window until I heard it come from the mirror again. As I woke up in the middle of the night, I heard Alexa speak. Okay, the security alarms have been disabled. (laughs) She wondered why she is casting two shadows. After all, there is only a single light bulb. I sobbed as my daughter begged me not to pull the trigger. It gets harder and harder to kill her each time she returns. Oh my god. (laughs) The grinning face stared at me from the darkness beyond my bedroom window. I live on the 14th floor. You get home, tired after a long day's work, and ready for a relaxing night alone. You reach for the light switch, but another hand is already there. Oh, yeah, I saw that one. (laughs) Right. There was a picture in my phone of me sleeping. But I live alone. The longer I wore it, the more it grew on me. She had such pretty skin. Ugh, yeah, I saw that one too. <laughs> All right. Working the night shift alone tonight, there is a face in the cellar staring at the security camera. My TV keeps turning on by itself. It's annoying, but what's more worrisome is how it only shows footage of me standing in my living room. Ooh, I had picked that one. Oh my god, I'm getting such goosebumps! <laughs> Alright. She asked why I was breathing so heavily. I wasn't. Finally to his car, he drove away from there as fast as he could. When he felt safe enough to breathe, a voice from the back seat said, Leaving so soon? Oh, Uh, my daughter won't stop crying and screaming in the middle of the night. I visit her grave and ask her to stop, but it doesn't help. My wife being pregnant without my involvement normally would have made me suspicious. 
Since we've been alone in the spaceship for over a year, it made me afraid. Ooh. You start to drift off into a comfortable sleep when you hear your name being whispered. You live alone. Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, then please do not continue to listen until after you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. And today, for our 25th episode, we are covering one of our favorite movies of old time, Lights Out. Yes! <laughs> and in case some of you are like WTF from our intro, um, we just read some scary short stories, and if you would like to either read the stories that we read or discover some new ones, we will link where we got those stories below. Yep. So this movie was based on an internet short, scary movie. It was about five minutes long. We did post it yesterday just so everyone could see it, the original. And we just wanted to honor that. And that's why you've been seeing the scary short videos all throughout the week. So we hoped you enjoyed them. There are a whole bunch more out there. There's, they're so much fun yeah, to watch, are. and they can do some real good scares in the yeah. short amount of time that they have. Yeah. So go check those out, and yeah. <laughs> so it inspired this movie. Hopefully, it'll inspire some others. Yeah, and uh, we got uh, our shark kitty tail. So don't mind her. <laughs> She is just our guest today. star, Navi. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yes, Navi from Legend of Zelda, <laughs> for those who have caught on. <laughs> but um, I guess before we jump into the summary, we can start with what tea we're drinking. Yes. Um, I am drinking some iced tea that I made. I think it was like the Lipton iced tea where it has like two giant tea bags that you uh, and then to sweeten it, I used uh, honey granules. Um, but yeah, it's pretty tasty, and I'm using my cup from choir from my senior year. I graduated in 2009. I, I don't think I have that cup still. Really? That's a pity. It's like I. It's actually a legitimately good cup. So it's like I'm not gonna. I, not yeah, stop I know. Using I it. I just don't remember where it ended up, honestly. Hmm. But <laughs> I am drinking a uh, chamomile tea with lavender. I I needed to calm oh. down my my heart rate. Sorry, my allergies have been oh. really messing with me. I went on a jog yesterday, and people were mowing their lawns left and right. So oh. that was loads of fun. But <laughs> needed to calm my heart rate down. So after this movie, this is one of the few movies that have some legitimate creep factor yeah like even after the movie's over it just uh, all lights all lights on <laughs> yeah before i go into the summary i just need to tell a funny story whenever we initially saw this movie we saw it in theaters <laughs> yes. and oh my God, we were yes. in like the middle aisle and i'm just like oh my god oh my god i'm like i'm shaking i'm freaking out i'm screaming and there is a lady sitting right next to us and whenever the credits started rolling she stood up and she looked down at me and i'm like i just need to know if you're okay <laughs> i'm like yeah <laughs> i'm just sitting there this she does this all the time it's all good <laughs> yeah like if and plus that's what i feel like that's when we first started watching scary movies so i wasn't quite oh no no we had seen some others well, before this okay yeah it, it like it really depends on the movie like this movie i was expecting to be scary especially since i had seen the short oh and, yeah and uh i think i was just psyching myself out at the same time you know 
But well, uh, it did have some legitimate scares, and and I love you, but you do tend to scare easy. So. I know. Like half the time, whenever I see a scary movie with a friend, they're like, "Your screams are scaring me more than the yes. movie is." Half the time, when I jump, it's because of you. So. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and it, I hate it because even when I'm expecting a scare, yeah. I still jump. But because I'm expecting and it, scream. I jump even more. And I don't understand it. But And you scream every time. Yep, I sure do. <laughs> Almost every time without fail. Yeah. But it's all good because it does make some parts really hilarious. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and a fun fact. So, as we stated... This is based off of a short. Well, the person that originally made the short is the same person that directed this movie. Um, so, yes. so that's pretty cool. You don't see that very often. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm glad it happened because he did a great job with this movie. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. So the quick rundown of this movie is the... Mother was in, would you call it a psych ward? or Psychiatric hospital. Yeah, thank you. Mulberry Hill Psychiatric Hospital. And she had a friend named Diana who had an extreme light sensitivity. And, <laughs> and the doctors were trying to cure her and it ended up killing her. And now... The movie takes place where the mother is an adult. She's still suffering from at least depression at a minimum. Like, with all of the things that she's going through, it's got to be more than that. But anyways. um, It feels like a lot more than that. But okay. (laughs) But the mother uh, has contacted Diana, I guess beyond the grave, you could call it. And um, so Diana and her... Well... well, it kind of feels like Diana latched onto her. Yeah. That, it's almost but, like a possession, but the mother is still... They were a little vague on it. Yeah. But, um, so whenever... Uh-oh. I feel a sneeze coming. You can do it. <laughs> I went away. Okay. okay. <laughs> but anyways, uh, <laughs> ghost... <laughs> It's like for the audio listeners, you don't get to hear that, but luck, our lucky video podcast listeners. Aha. But anyways, um, the Diana, you can, because of her light sensitivity and the fact that she's dead, um, you, you only see her in shadow now. And uh, so the kids figuring out that Diana actually is a real person and then was or was. <laughs> well, but the the fact that she she exists like th- it's not a figment of their imagination. Yeah, and they are seeing this figure. It is around doing things. It's not a nightmare. It's not a dream. They're not hallucinating. Like there's a thing there. <laughs> yeah, and they're trying to like help help the mom, which will uh, as, as a result help get rid of Diana. But anyways. On the entertainment scale, what would you rate this? I would honestly rate this a nine. I freaking love this movie. I really do. There are a couple of things here and there that I question, but on the whole, it is very well done. It's very entertaining. The characters are interesting and all. I love watching the dynamics between them, especially the main girl and her boyfriend. Yeah. It's just so funny. Back in <laughs> Brett. Yes. Brett's such a giant sweetheart. Like honestly, he's just trying so hard. <laughs> I know. And like honestly, I made the comment during the movie, I would be totally fine with a movie of just those two because they are the cutest, adorable couple ever. You really are. It's almost sickeningly sweet. Like, yeah. She's just, she has such commitment issues, though, Then he just tries so hard. And he's obviously super patient. Like, he said it's been eight months since they started seeing each other. 
Mm-hmm. And he comes over often, but she hasn't let him stay there once. Yeah. Doesn't even let him keep a pair of socks, <laughs> another pair of socks or anything. <laughs> like nothing of his can stay. What do you say is like, socks are not an anchor <laughs> or something. Yes. Socks aren't an anchor. <laughs> Um, he's like just one sock how about just one sock (laughs) no (laughs) but yeah I this isn't quite a 9 for me but it's a solid 8 like I love this movie like horror elements aside the characters specifically like the characters that focuses on are legitimately very well built characters and uh they're very lovable characters, which is very important during a horror m- movie because you don't want to hate the characters. Unless if it's slasher, then that's a little bit more appropriate. Cause then then you it's don't... more fun to hate them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I know... <laughs> we just start rooting for the killers and it's all good. <laughs> One thing I'd be curious to know is obviously it was based off of a short, but I feel like the movie also morphs the meaning of Diana and I almost wonder if she's supposed to represent what mental illness is like for a person where it's like you you can't it's extremely hard to get rid of and it can harm those around you in addition to yourself Um, it is a good narrative for it honestly like I was kind of thinking about that in the movie itself like Minus the parts where she shows up in the daughter's apartment to terrorize them there. Like, it could easily just be a narrative of that's her mental illness and they're trying to get her better. Yeah. And she's just fighting against it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, so. um, there, well, some of the things I want to bring up is more in the realism scale but overall a very well fleshed out movie there's a few inconsistencies that we'll bring up in the realism scale but those put aside it's a very well thought out movie and i i really don't have too many complaints um the mother frustrates me a little but i i feel like it's partially because of her mental state. Mm -hmm. And one thing I love is this is one of the few more current scary movies that's not afraid to actually have an ending. Like, whenever the mother... They don't make it seem like it's going to continue or that it could continue. Yeah. It's it's over. (laughs) Yeah, it's like once the mom dies, it's done. Mm-hmm. And I and it just that movie still scares me, and it's still a good movie. And so that just yeah. proves you don't have to leave things open. And if they want to make a sequel, you know, they can maybe have it with a different character in a different situation. I don't know. It it's like just because you've closed off or rounded out the story doesn't mean that you absolutely can't have a sequel. Um, But honestly, this movie doesn't need a sequel and I would be perfectly happy if it stands alone. And I think I'd actually be a little disappointed if they made a sequel, honestly, like it didn't, it doesn't need one. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if your movie needs a sequel, that doesn't mean that it's so good that, uh, yeah, it just some great movies can have a sequel, but a truly great movie doesn't necessarily need a sequel. Yeah, it's well rounded, it's wrapped up, it's it's gotten everything that it needed put out there. Yeah, it's just like so, it's just like Saw. Like Saw, yeah, started off the first movie was a very solid well done movie very simple and then they're like oh we need a sequel and that's when as as they progress it got worse and worse and worse and honestly i feel like that's how lights out would would be yeah i mean there were it was okay 
the Saw franchise up to a point, and we'll get to that in later podcasts, I'm sure. Yeah. I have no doubt we'll get to Saw at some point. <laughs> but they kind of went off track with it, and it became about something else. And it didn't stick to what it was putting out there originally. And I feel like that's probably what would happen with Lights Out if they continued it. Yeah. Is they would just keep morphing it into something completely different. And that's not the point. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... I don't really have any particular comments left. I don't think for the entertainment scale. Uh, did you have anything before we move on to realism? Yeah. Um, this one, it's one of those, like, it doesn't rely completely on jump scares, which I love. It's good at it's building up. It's just a really, really creepy thing that's going on. And yeah, there are a couple here and there, jump scares. It's going to happen. But at the same time, they didn't rely solely on it. So it makes it one of those movies that once it's over, you want all the lights on. And you're like, there is no sleep for a while. <laughs> like, yeah. We need to watch something happy or something because it's not happening for a bit. <laughs> this one still kind of freaks me out. But I keep going back to this movie every time. <laughs> Yeah, it's like even when the lights are, or when whenever the lights are off during the movie, because you know what can be in the dark, it just leaves you this kind of air of uh, apprehension, mm -hmm. even if they're not really building up to anything in particular in that moment. Yeah, it makes you a little bit paranoid. You're like, yeah, Shit, is she here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because there's a, honestly a few scenes where you're not sure if something is going to happen. And uh, so if, if something does happen, it just kind of jars you a little bit. Yeah. Well, and there's this like unreleased tension if nothing happens. Yeah. And that's how you do a really good scary movie. When the audience is on their edge of their seat the entire time expecting something to happen yeah. and then nothing happens and they're like, oh crap. Okay, where is she? Where actually is she? <laughs> Yeah. Because she wasn't where I thought she was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so, on to the realism scale. Um, I would give it... It's like the characters act like their reaction is pretty legit, but the inconsistencies with the light. I... Maybe a... Five or a six? I would give it a six. Um, I do take off points for the light. They didn't really explain how she works. Yeah, it's a really. little inconsistent. Like some light hurts her, some doesn't. Yeah. But she can still move in like partial light. Like make up your mind. <laughs> yeah, like especially the the biggest thing that bugged me was like the level of light that wasn't too bad and we even looked up like whenever the daughter was using the black light we looked it up and was like is this actually possible and it did specify that black light it's so little uv that doesn't harm your skin and for right. a person that would have a photosensitivity then it's like oh, okay i i can justify but one thing is in the beginning of the movie whenever she's a attacking the father paul is she can't open the door until the lights are completely off. But then later, she's in the hallway at the apartment, lights are completely on, and then whenever the daughter opens the door, Diana comes in, but you don't see it because the lights are on. So it's just a little bit inconsistent. And then also one thing is, so whenever she's in the sister's apartment and then they hear her in the closet and they go to open the door and the lights are on and then all of a sudden, you know, she tries to drag the son, um, Martin? Martin, yeah. Uh, under the bed. So it's like she teleports, but then at the very end, whenever the boyfriend is using his phone to try and... Uh, make her disappear she doesn't magically teleport behind him to try and get yeah. him she disappears and then as soon as the phone goes off she appears so, so that's very inconsistent 
It is. Um, but at the same time, their reactions were pretty solid. And we don't know if maybe she was just getting stronger as the movie went along because she was off her meds for longer, the mom. We have no way of knowing, for sure. Yeah. But, because they didn't really, they were a little bit, a little vague with that. Um, but, they did have some smart characters, which I appreciate. Like the greatly. boyfriend? So much. Yes, he was the smartest one of the bunch. Yeah. Using anything and everything available to him to get out of the situation. Mm -hmm. Like, he used his phone when he got, you know, shoved. <laughs> And use and the car helped. light. Then use the car light because mm -hmm. Diana had smashed his phone. And he knew that going back in there was stupid without at least some kind of help. And he didn't have his phone anymore because, again, the thing smashed it. So he left, got help, and came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which didn't really help her abandonment issues there for a bit. But still... <laughs> But if anything, it was if a smart thing to do. The fact that he came back, yeah, I think probably helped. Oh, definitely, a lot. that definitely helped his case, yeah, <laughs> for sure. But um, it was, was a little bit stupid that she went back for the mom, because really, like logically speaking, everything that they had seen said showed that Diana wasn't really wanting to harm Sophie that much as far as the kids had seen. Yeah. She knew they knew that she wanted to hurt them for sure. Yeah. But everything that they had seen and heard and all had shown that their mom was basically mostly safe. So really they could have like opened up the curtains real quick at the front of the house and then noped out of there and waited in the light until dawn when, you know, sunlight streaming through the windows and then go in there, hopefully with backup because the officers did call for backup mm -hmm. and go in there with, you know, at least some light <laughs> and just open up the blinds and curtains and all as they yeah. go. But she went back. And the mom realized that somehow Diana was tied to her and went a very extreme route. But <laughs> yeah, I I almost wonder if you know if the daughter had waited until it was light outside and she was able to bring the mother out. If, you know, if they got her back on her meds and she was starting to get well again, that, because, you know, the mother indicated there's a period that she didn't have Diana in her life. Mm -hmm. And so if they would have gotten her well again, then that, you can safely assume that Diana would probably go away. Yeah. Um, but I guess you could also think, well, if the mother ever went downhill again, then Diana comes back. So it's like yeah. the only permanent solution is to to have the mother kill herself, but it definitely wasn't the only solution. Yeah. Um, it is, it's a messy road either way, honestly. And that that is another thing that they did realistically portray, was in situations like that when there's a kid involved... It sucks because you know that's not a very healthy environment for the kid, but there's a very lengthy process to be able to remove them from that situation. And sometimes removing them from that situation doesn't necessarily mean they'll be put in a better one. Yeah. So the CPS worker, Emma, I had to write it down over here, her name, because we are bad with names, guys. Emma did say that just to get him away from the mother, she would have to file charges against her, which is not something that most people really want to have to do. It's a crappy situation, but legally, since she is the only legal guardian, technically, of the kid, the sister can't just come in and say, he's going to live with me now. Yeah. She actually has to go through those channels 
and file charges against the mother and prove that she is not fit to take care of him. Yeah. And even then, that doesn't mean that the sister gets custody of him. Yeah. That just means that the kid will no longer be living with the mom. Chances are he'd be put in like foster care, yeah. most likely, yeah. until they can prove that she is a an acceptable substitute, I believe they said, or surrogate for him to live with. Yeah. So if she was deemed irresponsible or not able to take care of him, then chances are she might have just taken him from a bad situation into another bad situation. Yeah. And so. I will make the comment, like the CPS worker, while she is talking to the sister, she is in the apartment and you just see her turn and she's looking at all the posters the sister has. I'm yeah. like that. It doesn't, I don't care how like yeah. edgy or punk or hardcore, whatever you want to call it. You are, it's like, you, you're, you still can be fit to be a parent. Now, of course yeah. the CPS worker later looks and she has a, a, a crack pipe or something. It was a, it was more like a, bong like weed or something okay well, it's like still. if you're smoking weed it's like big deal but if uh yeah, but, but it was still the fact that there was something yeah. not really suitable for kids there well Which, I, guess, I get that well the fact I that, that i guess one thing you could think of is you know the putting aside the fact that she is doing drugs the fact that it was out where he could potentially use it and be harmed, then I could see that. I could see that. But it just kind of ticked me off that they first went to the posters. It's like, oh, you like Avenge Sevenfold. Do you like this? You aren't a good parent. I, I like, mean, I, I would take down the poster with the half-naked chick. Just a thought. But the other ones, I really didn't see that big of a problem with. <laughs> well, it, I don't know. It's like if you just teach I mean, them its anatomy and it's not i don't know i yeah I, I she was a little judgy about the posters for sure yeah but <laughs> but the the drugs a, a yeah. little bit more understandable depending yeah, on the drug that. a little bit more debatable but either way even if she was just doing marijuana she shouldn't have it laying out with a kid around yeah um it's like yeah, that that was understandable yeah I, I got that one for sure yeah, but <laughs> it's just like your intimates. You're not gonna leave out your intimates for everyone to see, or like your kid to see that you're gonna, you know. Well, I mean, when uh, Emma did walk out of the apartment, they kind of backed up a little bit, and you could see some clothing on the floor and all. But at the same time, have you seen most kids' rooms? Because that's a normal state of habitation there. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it, it happens. <laughs> That's not a big deal. Just, you know, both of you make a pack to work on laundry together at that yeah. point. Like, it's it's an easier fix. Yeah, but that was a pretty interesting dynamic to where I was very much on the son's side. And obviously, I didn't want him to live with the mother. But it was mm -hmm. that dynamic on, well, you can see that the sister obviously has her issues that she needs to work for uh, work through. Before yeah. she can potentially be a guardian. Yes, but at the same time, she showed she was clearly willing to do so. Yeah. Like, she knew she had issues, but at the same time, she's like, I don't have a choice. This is my brother. Like, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Yep. But. So. Um, it was an interesting. It, like you said, it was an interesting dynamic. Yeah. And they don't really show that too often. So that was kind of cool. Yep. But yeah, overall, if you if any of you have not seen Lights Out yet, you really need Do to it. see it. It's a well first first Do it. go on to YouTube and search Lights Out so you can see the short. If you haven't seen it already since we posted it yesterday. True. Yeah. I mean just you can go on our page and <laughs> find yeah. it on Watch there. Watch the short first. And yeah. then watch the movie to see what they morphed it into. Because like we said, it's the same person that originally created mm -hmm. the short, now made it into a movie. And it just makes me... It's great. It's like, it makes me wish that there were other ways to fund creators that do shorts. Because it's like, if they can 
make that solid of a movie. I don't know if it's his first movie. I mean, a lot of them have, like, a Patreon or something, but they don't necessarily use it to start up a movie. They usually use it to... Support themselves. To make others. Yeah. And to support themselves. Yeah. But... um, But it's, it's really good, guys. Like, it's amazing how creeped out you can get in just five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and how long you stay creeped out. Like, once the movie starts, I'm creeped out pretty much the entire time. Yep. Yeah, it's it's from start to finish, and even afterwards, you're just like, I need a blanket, I need a hug, and I need all of these lights to stay on. Yeah, it's like, forever. the movie still has its flaws, but, I mean, overall, the characters are good, the way that the scares are done are pretty good and the build up and um you know the the story like the backstory behind Diana is kind of eh but it a little it, bit it could be it a lot worse yeah it wasn't really thought through that well especially like we have no idea why or how she's latched on to Sophie and follows her around and also you made a good point while we were watching it also that she died as a kid. But when we see her all throughout the movie, she is fully grown. Yeah. So, how? Yeah. How I, and why? There definitely are shortcomings whenever you have to transition a short to a movie. Because whenever they did the short, they're just trying to be scary. They didn't have any thought behind the creature or, or as far as like what the backstory is. Um, so when you have to transition that to, oh, well, now we need a story. Though I do, I am curious, I can't think of any at the top of my head, but there has to be movies where they have a creature that doesn't really have a backstory. It's like, I wonder what the movie would have been like if they didn't give Diana a name or a backstory or anything like that, and then just focused on you know the the scares and oh. mm-hmm. <sighs> who knows no because then we'd be asking why did it start terrorizing this family where did it come from yeah we're, like it kind of has to have a little bit of a backstory yeah yeah for a reason that's the main thing though it can make a lot of movies so much scarier if there's no reason why they're doing the thing Kind of like Halloween. The whole point of that movie, there was no reason. Yeah, you just knew that he was messed up from the start. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's a, the only disconnect that I get is you can see that they tried to cut out a backstory that didn't quite yeah. fit, but it was kind of, you know, all they could really think of to get it to make some sense but that that's well that and the the light levels pick one <laughs> yeah yeah those are my biggest complaints but that's yeah. not going to kill the movie for those me those are kind of small yeah. honestly in comparison especially compared to a lot of the other movies we've already reviewed oh yeah and torn to shreds like <laughs> this one to have two things that we're really just kind of nitpicky about that's pretty good i feel like yeah uh, so if we were in that situation, like if we had to, uh, you know, fight Diana, is there anything that you would do to survive? Or I felt like the characters would did everything that I would try and do. Like they tried yeah. with the electricity, they lit candles. It once all of that went away, they yeah. tried to light a fire, and then they had the the rechargeable flashlight and the UV light and their phone. Um. I feel like the dad could have been a little bit smarter. He did try to nope out, which, I mean, same. But (laughs) he just, like, stares at her and goes, okay. (laughs) And then just runs, which... (laughs) I would do the same. I'd be like, hell no. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) And run out. But he can see that it's only moving in the dark, and he's still, like, running through the dark. So when he's, like, in the light and it's already hurt his leg and all, I'm sorry, but I'm doing, like, jumping jacks or something. Because that thing's on a motion sensor. 
And it's going to get constant motion from me until someone comes in the morning, because <laughs> no. Or I'm using my phone, kind of like the boyfriend did. Yeah. Yeah. Ben hates light that much. Here you go. I don't understand why he ran back to his office. Maybe he felt like he couldn't make it if he ran to... Or maybe she was like in his pathway to the outside, but I feel like a factory like that should have had multiple exits. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I well, didn't appreciate all the mannequins either, but that's just how they're that was their factory. Yeah. <laughs> it was there was it was needed. I'm glad she didn't move any of them. <laughs> but that w- actually would have been kind of cool if she had moved the mannequins to kind of psych him out. And then she's like, surprise. <laughs> but, but it wasn't needed. Yeah. It would have been unnecessary. And she wanted to get to him quickly before he... Because he was calling people to start trying to, to get help for his wife. True. True. So he was already trying to stop all of this from happening. Yeah. So she wanted to end it... Now. <laughs> Though my biggest complaint with the dad is whenever his co-worker was like, I think I saw something. Yes. And he was just like, whatever. And At uh, least walk her to her car. Come on, man. Phew. Excuse me. <laughs> She's clearly freaked out. You're really going to make her walk across this spooky, empty factory place on her own? Rude. I know you're dealing with some shit, but rude. Finish yeah. your conversation from the car. Well, plus, if you're at work to work, work. Like, yes. <laughs> like, leave. Like, I know it's it's hard to completely leave your, your home troubles when you're in the workplace, but he was actively um, trying to do home stuff at work. So, I don't know. Well, I think he was doing that because... He couldn't be interrupted by the mom. Mm. Like, she couldn't walk in and hear the plans for basically an intervention. True. Very true. And he said, we don't call it an intervention. We're going to call it something else. We just want Uh, to get her help. Yeah. But he was planning this and calling other people in on it and all, which I wonder whatever happened to that. Because he had contacted some people about that, and she never seemed to get the help that she needed. Yeah, I don't know. So, where were those people? I don't know. But, but. Uh, yeah, I did, you know, we are we are being a little nitpicky, though. With We have to, because the movie is great. There's very little to pick apart. Yeah, but there are, there, there are those inconsistencies that kind of stick yeah. out, for sure. And there are going to be inconsistencies with, like, every movie ever. It's a movie. (laughs) Yeah. And they've only got so much time to do what they need to do for the movie to progress. Yeah. So. (sighs) But But I don't. It's awesome. Y'all need to go watch it. Yes. 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 (laughs) But that's all I got. (laughs) Yep. I'm done. (laughs) Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us again. This is our 25th episode. Woot woot. So awesome. And, thank and you guys. don't forget about Scavenger Hunt for uh, those who yes. want to join us on the live event for reading. Yeah, reading Scavenger Hunt. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Have you even started yet? I haven't. But I also, I want the book to be fresh enough during the live stream because otherwise <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to procrastinate. I'm starting it this week, I promise. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, what you said last week. <laughs> uh, well, this mm-hmm. week I really mean it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, well, join us on that live stream. Hopefully she'll have read it by then. <laughs> we'll, we'll do the review on that. If you guys have any uh, suggestions or of any movies or other books or anything that you guys want us to review, let us know. Um, next month, do you want to tell them what's going on? So next Starting month next episode is Asian Horror Month, 
And just yeah. to kind of break it down, we're specifically focusing on movies that are in a different language that haven't... I mean, we're covering maybe one or two movies that have American remakes, but we really want to just allow people to be influenced by um, international movies and specifically Asian horror is our one of our favorite horror movies. Nobody do horror like Asians do horror. Like it's oh there's some really good scares in those. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm excited. And it's cool you get to learn you learn a lot from their culture to watching those movies but yeah, the, those movies, the, of course, there's bad ones just like American movies, of course. But once you when you find a good one, whew, yes. it sticks with we you. We found some gems, guys. It really sticks We're with excited. you. We're so. excited. Yeah, I'm super excited, super, too. Super excited about it. So that'll start next week. And it'll be a full month, so there's four episodes once a week, just like Shark Month. And we're going to watch some some international horror movies here and give our takes on them. Yeah, and you know, if you guys are interested in, in the movie, then we just want to, you know, encourage you to support that because the more support these movies get then the more they'll be brought over to american audiences yes. yeah it's like just because a movie has subtitles doesn't mean that it's not worth watching yeah a lot of times honestly there are some asian horror films that are much better than a lot of the horror films that i've seen from here so it just depends on the situation, the director, the actors, how they bring it across, and really just the writing itself. Like, a script can make or break a movie. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, I also feel like, you know, especially nowadays, the American horror movies are very much, like, in-your-face scares, while the majority of Asian horror films are, you just feel like this aura of dread. The yes. entire time. And yes. sometimes you get a release, sometimes you don't. And it, but but every good movie I've watched like has stuck with me. Yeah. I mean it's just like whenever we did Juwan, like that mm-hmm. movie still like I watched Juwan Origins and I she had nightmares <laughs> the night I watched it. <laughs> she was texting me, guys. I'm scared. I don't know why I'm doing this. Why did I do this? <laughs> and then the next morning, I had nightmares <laughs> all night. I'm so scared. <sighs> and yeah, if you guys uh, are interested in watching Joan Origins on Netflix, do not watch the dub. Watch it in the original Japanese. Like, yes. just watch it in Japanese with the subtitles. Yes, it's more reading, but it there's a lot that's lost in translation when and you the go from too. the original to the dubbed version, the yeah. the English dub over. Yeah, so it makes a huge difference. It really does. They can't get everything translated across. It just doesn't work. Yeah, it's not like the actor that's dubbing can transfer themselves into that actor's shoes and know exactly yeah. what they're trying to portray. So there, there are scenes where the dub will come out kind of differently than the original. Well, and the cultural differences, too. Some things that we wouldn't necessarily think of as a big deal here is something that is definitely a thing over there that would really creep a lot of them out. So it's hard to to get in that mindset and really understand what they're trying to convey to the audience. Yeah. Yep. So, but I'm excited. And you haven't seen the, the next one yet, right? The next movie that we're doing? 
I I did, but it's been a while. Oh, it. It's been a little bit. <laughs> I was hoping you hadn't watched it yet. Okay, well, we're going to watch it again together, and we're going to give that one a review. So join us next week for the start of Asian Horror Month. And until then, stay safe and stay spoopy, guys. Bye. Bye.